Welcome back to another episode of Todo Tranquilo. Today, I'm very excited. Um, yeah, I'm just excited. You're the you, to, to everybody who doesn't know who he is. His name is Gentry Pack, G Pack, aka G Pack, and you are a painter. Yes, sir. And you are the first painter mm. that I have on the podcast, Man. and that's why I'm very very <laughs> excited because not only not only do i personally like your work like it's not just and i mean i tell i tell everybody that i have on like i gotta fuck with what you do for sure on some type of level Absolutely. for me to have you on yeah because i can't i can't fake it mm. and dude the stuff you make mm. is just immaculate I appreciate if, if i if i could if i can edit <laughs> properly i'll try and add some paintings into the video somewhere for sure, for sure uh in the pause but i guess give me give me your introduction to if somebody were to ask you on the street like who are you how would you yeah. introduce yourself my name is gentry pack i go by the name of g pack i'm an artist muralist clothing designer just overall just visual creative man and i just really love that shit i care about that <laughs> shit i love you it know? Now you could you could you can sense when a person just likes creating things in general, mm -hmm. and I think it with you it's it's more prominent that you can notice it because mm. you are a painter. I appreciate you know? that. I appreciate that. Um, like I said, I'm excited. I'm excited to have you on, man. Nah, I was looking forward to this too, bro, because I could just tell like you care. You know <laughs> what I mean? I think you in general, like when people care, like it's just better. It feels better. So and likewise, bro. I. I actually on camera I didn't want to ask you this question. Mm. So cuz um we met up when you had like the little private exhibit. Man, thank you for coming. That meant like yeah. so much. You don't understand <laughs> how much that meant. That's why I was like he's a real one for Yeah, sure. when you yeah. well when you invited me, I was like I got to make it mm. up. Like I at first I got to meet him, see what he's like, see what the vibes and then see the artwork like in person. Right. Um but correct me if I'm wrong, but I felt like you were definitely trying to read me too that day. <laughs> Kind of like, <clears throat> okay, I'm listening. Go ahead, go ahead. Like, not in a bad way, but just like, what kind of person is he? And like, how genuine is this entire process for him? For sure, definitely. I think, um, I think the only reason I was maybe trying to read you that hard is because like I could sense it. You know what I'm saying? Because like a lot of times, like if I know somebody's not on shit. Like, I'm not even really finna talk to you like that. <laughs> but I think deep down, I was like, even the way you articulate, the way you dress, like, the fact you were there on a Monday afternoon, like, I know you had to take off work for that shit. You know what I mean? I had to take off work for that shit. So it's yeah. like, I understand, like, I was like, damn, like, why are you here almost? You know what I mean? Let me know. So, what does he want out of this? Yeah, not even, that. like, not in a bad way, but just like, I'm like, damn, like, he really gave a fuck. So. Well, the thing is, and I, I've said this to a couple people that I have had on, hmm. that when... When you are a person on the internet and maybe you have a good, you know, good amount of following, mm -hmm. you unfortunately do have to look out for those types of things. Like, because then when people reach out, you're, you are in, and it's like, and this is definitely not a shot like, oh, he's egotistical or anything like that. It's just, it genuinely, that's what you think about. It's like, I have this amount of following and this person's trying to reach out to me. Mm. How genuine is this going to be? Or is this just like, Bro has this many followers. That's what I need. I'm going to put it to you like this. <clears throat> like, we're here right now. And we had, you know, our exchanges. You coming to the cookout and all this. Like, <laughs> most DMs, I don't even respond to. You know what I mean? So, yeah. like, that level of authenticity, like, you just had it from the jump. And I think, like, a lot of just people don't even just grasp that concept. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, you're spot on, bro. Like, <laughs> it's dangerous out here. It's treacherous. It, it, the, that's you know? the thing. It's like, it, it is. Like... Yeah. And because sometimes it can come off as egotistical, like, mm, mm -hmm. oh, Brody thinks just yes, he has this many followers. It, but it's like some people in this world aren't as genuine. Yeah. And that's the first thing that they look. I mean, that's yeah. the, like the number one thing people talk about when it comes to L.A. and the, you know, influencer scene. It's like that's true. I heard that <laughs> that in like L.A. people will talk about it's like you'll meet another person that's like an influencer. And the first thing they say is like. What's your follower count? And like, I haven't <clears throat> heard about that. So I didn't think it was like as true, but I've heard that a couple times. So I was like, damn, it really must be that extreme. But the crazy part is like, 
I can't stress this enough. And every real artist will tell you like that number doesn't mean shit. And it doesn't have anything to do with like what you're actually doing. It's completely separate from your life. So it's like, why are we even like, you know, yeah. gassed on that? <laughs> I get it. Like I get it psychologically, but like I can't stress it enough. Like nothing changes, bro. Like you don't even get a notification when you hit us. Like it's just like you don't <laughs> yeah. even get nothing. Like a sticker, like no. no, no you don't like, even get a sticker. <laughs> like it's just another day. And yeah. Don't fuck up because then you'll lose half of them bitches. So it's just like that A. Hey, that that's very that's a good take on it. You know what I'm that saying? Is, that is true. Cause just as quick as you can get them, you can lose them them follower account as quick as <sighs> Yeah, just as quick. I've heard about girls getting boyfriends and then losing like two thousand followers. That is now that's crazy. To like, me. but that, think about it though. Think about it. Like this like, is what so, we're basing shit off of. You know what's like, crazy is like I like to when I hear stories like that. I try to like I always play devil's advocate in the sense of like let me put myself in that sh- in the in that type of shoes and like like wh- why would that you know why would I unfollow somebody if they have but then again I am you know off the market myself so That's it's like I'm saying bro it's I, different I don't even but it's just crazy cuz I definitely have heard of that where it's like you know there's women that have like a modeling career and have mm-hmm. this many followers and it's like as soon as they show off to like their man their partner it's quiet <laughs> it's real it's quiet, quiet bro. It's crazy That's funny But um That's funny Yeah man uh so I don't mean to get too deep so quickly. Please do. But um, so I definitely have, you know, seen like some of the uh, the other publications and interviews that you've done in the past. Mm. And something I just found out not that long ago mm. um, that I didn't, definitely didn't know. And obviously it's not something that you just publicly announced mm-hmm. is that you, you did unfortunately lose your mother For sure. at the age of 16. Yeah. And I guess the real heart, the real question I'm asking is like, do you, is that, um, like, especially now, the, like, kind of in your painting career, mm-hmm. is this something that always, you always think about where it's like, damn, like, I wish my mother would was here to see this and see how far I've become, considering the previous paths that you've chosen in life that you probably spoke about For compared sure. to what you're doing now? Absolutely. Um, Yeah, I don't think my mom ever really saw any of my artwork for real, for real, Um, because it was before that, obviously, but... I don't think about it too, too much. I think if anything, like there's certain, there's certain lines or phrases that will pop up in my head from when I was young, 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 young. And it's almost like now I can replay that conversation, but like at a 28 year old's perspective. So it's like, it's almost like the conversation continues. Yeah. So it's like, it never really stopped in a sense. Like she's just not like, in the room anymore so i think the energy is still there and i definitely think just like just the inspiration to like leave a powerful legacy like that's obvious yeah because sure. obviously when you're 16 to now you're 28 that literally i, was a child. I wasn't yeah. even born yet you know what i mean exactly. like i'm just like i'm fully on just senses you know what i mean this looks fun this looks cool this looks exciting girls like that's my brain <laughs> yeah you know no, what i mean 100 so it's like you're my not mom's even... past it's like now, like, we start thinking about, like, anything that actually matters. So, yeah, 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 yeah. that's crazy. For sure. But um, I always say I think losing her early was easier than losing her now. So that's my real it, thing. It would, it, <coughs> excuse me, it would definitely have, I mean, the impact of losing, you know, a parent, especially a mother at that, that mm-hmm. you know, not to take away from fathers, but For sure. it's so weird that when, <laughs> when you are a male, yeah. And you have a mom like that mother to son connection is different. And I think it's because they're the ones that birth you. So mm-hmm. there's like that always that like that invisible connection. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. and that that's the only reason why I ask if mm. there's any thoughts, you know, to that. For sure. No, I um, appreciate you just even being cool about it. <laughs> yeah, because like I, you know, it's I wanted to ask, but it's mm-hmm. when it comes to those types of topics, it's, it's very hard. touchy and sure. you can't just outright ask a question like that. I agree. Um, <clears throat> obviously, you've said it millions of times in probably every single interview that, you know, you you started with architecture and then kind of moved into painting. Right. When, when did the... I kind of want to know a little bit about the architecture because, like, not everybody... Like, I get that you probably only kind of really did it for a bit and then left it alone, but it's like... The architecture is something something so out of left field, just like painting is. Mm. Where it's like that's you know, when you hear about kids saying, "What do you want to be when you grow up?" 
architecture is not definitely one of those, yeah. especially even at a younger age. Like, yeah. when did that come about? I think for me, it was like I knew I could draw in high school. I didn't paint at all in high school. So I was just simple. I was like, I can draw. What's a job that draws a lot? Architect. Cool. Done. Like, that's it. That's the, the, the max amount of thought I put into it. So um, got to UMG, took the architecture program, and that shit was... It was pretty intense, bro. Like, I would tell the story, like, you just draw straight lines, like, freehand, just to get good at drawing straight lines for hours. And um, eventually, I had to commit to, like, this, like, seat in studio. It's like, almost like a competition. There's only a certain amount of seats. Not everybody in the class gets it. And if you don't get it, you essentially got to change your major type shit, like, on some Harry Potter type shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's crazy. So, yeah, it's like... Right, it's intense. It's intense. And I ended up getting in, but I had, like, the worst GPA because I just wasn't fucking... With, I just wasn't <laughs> in school. I just wasn't there type shit. Like, I was on campus, but I wasn't in Were class. you that type of dude that was on some truancy shit? Like what just you mean didn't, by that? What you like, mean? like, you know, I'm skipping school type shit. Nah. Like, even in high school or... I was a good kid. I cheated a lot in high school. I just didn't do my work. I never <laughs> did my work, but I always... Had work turned in and yeah. it was A's on it. So it was like, I was getting good grades. I had great <laughs> grades. I think when I got to college, I started getting into just like mental health, bro. Like, that was the first time I was really like, yo, I can't get out of bed today. Like, I don't wanna do anything yeah. at all. And I think that's just cause like, I was just having growing pains of like, I wanna be lit. I wanna be fresh. I'm seeing all this shit blow up on the internet. I'm in here drawing straight lines. Like, <laughs> what the fuck is this? I ain't got no money. I no should be nothing. making six figures you right know now. What? Yeah. No, I'm literally like entitled feeling that way. Like, I should be on Complex today. You know what I'm saying? But like, life don't work like that. So, yeah, I just had to like be patient. And ultimately, I got into that program I was telling you about, but forgot to fucking click the email. <laughs> you feel me? So, That's kind of crazy, bro. I opened my email probably more than like three times, like per semester type shit. Oh, bro, you know I would, how if was? I would have known you back then, mm. I would have gave you so much shit. You think over so? Some, yeah, I would have been like, well, the thing is, like, obviously, like if if we knew each other back then to yeah. like now, yeah, I you know, I eventually I would have been like, things worked out for you, G Pack. I but, think it had to go that but way. But I definitely, I definitely think I would have like, yeah, I would have been yeah. like, come on, Brody. I think it had to go that way because I had to reach a point of frustration to be like, this is fucking dumb. I'm going to go be an artist. You know what I'm saying? Like, otherwise, I would, I would be an architect right now. I, I would get not that. be here. It's kinda, I mean? It was kind of like your thre the threshold in your life where it's like, what do I actually really want to do with yeah, my life? Yeah, and I had so. to say, I'm really going to do this, you know? So, I, I feel that. You feel me? I, I, get, I get that. <laughs> it's <laughs> risky, but... It's hella risky. We chilling. We chilling. Well, I mean, you're here. Yeah. You're, you've made it the, this far and like... Mm obviously continue to grow always mm, mm. um when when did you actually start drawing and what are the kind of like the things that you started drawing was it always like dogs in general and animals oh, or uh, okay when you like you first started drawing was it maybe cartoon characters because yeah. i know you you did speak a little bit about that in a past interview that you did kind of like comics for sure yeah it was straight dragon ball z bro like i remember it was straight dragon ball z sonic the hedgehog you know, any type of just like kid, yeah. you know, eight year old type shit. And um, that led to just having like a decent confidence with the pen. You know what I mean? So when I got to high school, I was big into charcoal and that was just my thing. I was like, yo, I could do a charcoal face, hand, egg, whatever. Like we can get busy. That's crazy. Then painting came in in college because I was like, fuck it. I need to just do something new. And let motherfuckers know I'm him, even though I'm, <laughs> I guess I'm him, you know? So then that's when the painting came. And that's when, like, it was strictly abstract and it was strictly animals. So it might be, like, a, a elephant or, like, a, a lion or whatever I thought, like, match somebody's person. It could be a giraffe, a butterfly, whatever. Like, I would just give them out just to, like... When you say abstract, is it, like, on some, like... I'll, I'll send I don't, to I don't, you. I don't I'll know about... I don't know, like, probably the only painter I really know about... Um, is like like painter painter sure. is like Pablo Picasso is type like, shit type shit. I would say if you took Picasso, where it's like the faces are all triangles and different shapes. It was shit. very like geometric, very oh, geometric, okay. uh, very expressive. No realistic features at all. Like it would look like an elephant, but like it might not even have like eyes. You know what I'm saying? Like it would just be the trunk and like the tusk and like that's it type shit. Okay. Um. And then from there, bro, I don't even know how I got into portraits. I think it's just time. 
I almost just like, because I was scared to do people for a while. Mm -hmm. And then I just started, and then I just did not stop. And then the <laughs> dogs came in, that's probably like last year. That was when I was really on my like, yo, fuck everybody type shit. Like, <laughs> no, because I could, I could see the uh, kind of like the, the pressure of like drawing an animal f to drawing a person. 100%. Because it's like, it's less... Um, what it, I, it's I'm less forgiving. A, That's the best. Way to there put it. you yeah, go. Yeah, it's like yeah, because yeah, it's like if you could draw a dog and a dog could be a dog depending on the perspective of the person. Facts. Because art is subjective as you know as hell. Facts. So I could definitely understand that, but I mean, just I can't, bro. I could even, I could barely draw a stick figure. I can't Sorry. even imagine drawing Yo, like. I tell every person <laughs> this: anybody can paint. You just have to want to. That's, That's all, true. Like if you was a, like if you hung out with me for like two weeks. And you were just around, you would learn a lot of shit. And, like, if you stuck around, you would be just as good as I am. I'm not even gassing. Like, that's all it is, bro. I mean, practice makes perfect, 100%. Right? 100%. And then pressure makes diamonds. Mm, bars. <laughs> bars. Um, yeah, well, that's good to know, man. Mm. Like, when it comes to, when it comes to dogs, mm. so what, what was the... Well, you, did you just choose a dog that you kind of? Because obviously, your your technical, what's the word I'm looking for, man? Mm. I can't even think of right. I, I don't, I'm drawing blanks today. Take your time. But like, um, when it comes to like your signature, for sure, your signature right now is kind of like the Doberman. Yeah, yeah. When you your first animal that you drew was abstract. It was an elephant. Mm -hmm. How'd you go from elephant to? A dog and then specifically a Doberman. Yeah. Was it were you is it something that you just felt? Were you just like I've always liked Dobermans, just simple as that, or is it deeper than that to you? It's both in a way, right? So it started out that simple. The first piece I did was Hellhounds. It was three Dobermans and it had like the three 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 in the background. And I did that, it was just a personal piece for my living room. I was like, I need something hard and people come to the crib, like I feel like these dogs would just be tough. You know what I mean? They black. We're going to put them on some chains. Like, and then it ended up becoming like a mental health piece because I was like, each dog represents like an aspect that I want to like, you know, work on. Right. So I did that thinking that's the last time I'll ever draw a Doberman. I'm like, I just did some shit for my living room. And I think it's important. You got to like listen to what the people are saying, but not like pander to it. You know what I'm saying? But like for some reason with that particular, when I, the way I drew that Doberman, like, it struck. So I was like, all right, let me do it again and see if it strikes again. And it struck again. So I was like, all right, we can rock with this. And now <clears> it's gotten <throat> to the point where, like, I still find new beauty in the dog. Like, I was drawing last night. I was painting, like, a Doberman puppy. And that shit like a fucking Pokemon or something, bro. Like, it had a little, like, you know, the fire <laughs> I, eyebrows and yeah. shit. I was like, yo, this shit look like Arcanine or something. Like, it was, like, lit. So I don't know. I just think it's, it's such a, a deep and historic breed. So much stuff goes on with it that's, like triggering beautiful it's just a lot of misunderstood like, you know what i'm saying it's a lot of culture behind that breed and i just love it because it's black too so i'm just like but yeah so you spoke a little bit about your mom mm. well, how does your dad fit into all of this mm. because he was obviously he's been the parent that's been in your life yeah. since the passing of your mother for sure and probably seeing you take that career of architecture he was probably very proud not saying that he's not <laughs> proud but it's like <laughs> yeah I can I can only just, you know, putting myself in his shoes, I can imagine what his thoughts were when you told him, yo, yeah. didn't get that chair, <laughs> but I'm going to paint now. <laughs> how did, how did, what was his thought process? Or have you, have you even spoken to your dad, like, kind of like about that? I'll be trying to speak to him to get his perspective on stuff like that. But it's like... Is he a little closed off? He's a little closed off with, like, the sappy conversations. Just a little bit. Not, like, hella. Not OD. But I've been <laughs> trying to pull it out of him. I'm like, all yeah. right, I'll relax. I'll relax. I'll re <laughs> but um, he's definitely proud. Like, when I come home to visit, like, he be for glory and out. Like, decked out, wearing all the merch, which is dope. Um, he shows support in, like, a... In the weirdest ways. Like, I remember he modeled for one of my collections... And he came through and, like, he had this book. And he just pulled it out of his bag. And it's a book that I was in. And it was a bookmark on the page that I was on. So I was like, oh, you be knowing? Like, 
<laughs> you know what I mean? He's yeah. like, I it's like, I know cool. you know I paint, but yeah. So like, I never would have known that he even paid attention like that. But the little things show me like he's rocking with it. You know I think, what I'm I, yeah, I think I can definitely see that where it's, um, he's a parent that's like, I'm not gonna, we're not gonna sit here and possibly cry together yeah but yeah, but i will show you <laughs> i will show you signs that i i give a fuck about what you're doing Absolutely. and i support you but yeah because it's like because you told me before we actually started recording that he's not really on social media like that yeah, so he's not yeah. really super yeah like he's aware that you have a you know a presence in yeah. in the internet but he doesn't know he the doesn't capacity get it. of it, yeah. Like if I'm like that, I just got 150 million views on this video. He'd be like, "Is that a lot?" You know what is I mean? It, like, yeah. 150 views, but anything is like, it's yeah, like, it's a lot. Yeah. yeah so but yeah, he'd be chilling. I can I can definitely understand that because like especially when when he is that type of person that you just described him as, right? And you start to notice the little things where it's like, oh mm, shit, like yeah. you're kind of aware of the extracurriculars I be doing for sure. For sure. It, it can speak. It definitely speaks. Absolutely. Where it's Absolutely. like, all right, you, you, you down, you down with it. That's definitely my twin, bro. For real. And we look just alike too, so it's fire. That's great. He's gonna be at the cookout. Cause that'd be. He dope. probably will. He's gonna be awkward though. <laughs> Cause it's like he's not used to like me like cussing and drinking and like you know what I mean. Like still so seeing me like really be myself. He's gonna be like, I'm going to my room. You know what I mean? But you might see him. You might see an older black dude walking around. That's some crazy. Or some shit. Yeah. So, yeah, because I know I'm kind of like that type. Like, obviously, I'm not, um, you know, when it comes around my mom, like, I'll be keeping the cuss until a minimum. Facts. I, I call them I call them sentence enhancers. Big though. facts. <laughs> but Big uh, facts. it's a respect thing. You know yeah. I mean? like, it's kind of just like, you know, I don't be, and obviously I don't do crazy things around her but i can i can understand that where it's like yeah it it probably makes a parent feel a little bit uncomfortable it's like i'm not used to seeing the side of you so for sure for sure (laughs) that's understandable that is very true man let's talk about the uh the first what what was the first was there a first exhibit that you did because uh demon dogs that's the one you did with brio soul right yeah 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 was there another exhibit that you possibly did before that where maybe it wasn't, what's the word? Not that you didn't care enough, but it wasn't, it didn't garner that you had to really put a lot of work into it or mm, like an easy exhibit. You yeah. Think? Where it's like where you showcased your art. Yeah. Yeah. I where, think, um, I think maybe the perfect example would be like my first ever group show. Um, my first gallery I signed in New York and I thought that was like super lit. And I mean, it's New York, man. you know, like it was cool, yeah. Great spot, Chelsea Art District, super straight. And I remember, um, it was kind of wild. It was the first show ever. I had this portrait of Young Thug of all people, and it was two of them, it's like clones basically. And one was sipping a cup of lean, and the other one is flipping off the camera. And it was dope because it's like the hand was like out of focus, so like it looked like a real photo type shit. And I never really, you know, been to a gallery experience that I was actually in. So I don't even know how to stand. I don't know where to put my hands. I don't know what to talk about. And some, like, rich Australian dude walked in and just, like, bought that shit off the wall. And I was like, damn, like, this kind of hard. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. like, and I just, like, rolled back home the next day. And I was like, yo, I just sold my first piece at my first show. Like, that was sick. So. No, that's that's, like, a, a good monument of your painting career where it's, like, that... I mean, that's a clear indication, like, okay, my shit is that tough that somebody else is going to want to buy it instead of just showing people and it's like, oh, yeah, that's dope, and then walk away. For it's, sure. It's a big difference. Yeah, so. yeah. No, it felt really good. <clears throat> I would have left that bitch feeling like Timothy, No, man. I was really, like, jumping up. I was skipping down the street type shit. <laughs> yeah. The check wasn't even nothing crazy at all, but, yeah, it was dope, though. It was dope. Was it was it a little bit nerve wracking? Because I'm, I imagine you know they like brought it up to you and it's like yo yeah this guy wants to buy your painting and you're just like fuck I don't even know how much to sell it for. No, so the cool thing is like the gallery handles all of that shit right. Oh, so it already had the price set. Like I didn't even really have to do anything. It was more like we were talking. I could tell he was feeling it, and then like he just went over to like the seller, if you will. And the next thing you know, they just put a red dot next to it, and then people just start clapping. 
like that's your shit. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> you know I, what I mean? I've never been to like yeah. like an art exhibit where it's like kind of like an auction because yeah. that's what it that kind of so seems a little like. bit. You know what I mean? But like yeah, they just, just handle that. Like, you don't got to ship nothing. It's just like it's your check will be on the mail. You know what I mean? Because so. I've seen um, there's like artists. I, I can't. I don't even know their names or anything mm-hmm. like that. But it's you. like the really main like super like weird artists mm-hmm. like there's a guy that had like a bunch of buckets of sand okay and like oh he knocked him over he knocks oh, he it over him, yeah and then over. everybody just claps that shit was hard <laughs> you didn't like it yeah i just i didn't under and maybe like that's the thing is like when it comes to that type of art i'm mm. very much not that i'm closed off to it it's just yeah. like i don't i guess again everything's subjective and maybe mm. i didn't see the real message behind mm, it or mm. i didn't look deep enough to where it's like what it could mean I'm going to put you on game, bro. And I, like, just learned this. Your technical ability in art is the least important thing. Like, I can paint really well, right? Like, it doesn't matter. (laughs) It doesn't matter. And that's not why anything will ever sell. And I really just recently had to swallow that. Like, it's more about, like, what's the message you're saying? What was the intention behind the piece? What was the research, the process, the thesis, the artist statement? All these, like, tech, like... Being an artist, you're more so like a writer, yo. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it's like, I'm sure for that one video to go as viral as it did, I'm, it was kind of dumb too. You know what <laughs> I mean? But at the same time, like, I'm sure there's some type of like very concrete message being said. Yeah. You know Instead of I mean? him just stacking a bunch you of know buckets what I mean? of sand. And I can't just pull up with like some dogs and be like, look, it's hard. Ain't it? <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's just like, well, that, but that's the difference though. It's like, absolutely. Your paintings are hard as fuck. I appreciate it. That's the you. thing. It's like, yeah. obviously there's messages, messages to your art, but it's like just surface level. Yeah. A person that's not into art can appreciate right, it. Right. Right. I appreciate that. So I, I think that's it. what, also sets apart the super weird yeah. <laughs> artists like that that do you know yeah, exhibits yeah. like that to yeah. paintings where you could still process it in your own way absolutely but it's so you could appreciate it at a surface, surface level, level where it's like yeah where it's like that person has a talent to what he because like drawing anything and then like the thing is, like, when it comes, and you probably don't think about it that deep in that aspect because you are the painter, you know? Mm-hmm. To you, it kind of comes naturally. Mm. I want to paint something. I know You kind of already know where to start. Facts. To the normal person, drawing anything, painting anything, it's like, how do I even start, you know? Mm. Like, even if we take it to, like, you know, Bob Ross paintings. Yeah. He Go. makes... He makes Go. Bro, He's he so makes tough. like sceneries and the off like one brush of, of you know, one stroke of, of a brush yeah. to the normal person. It's like it. That's why I think you can appreciate your art on a very surface level mm-hmm. or no, somebody doesn't really need to think that deep and can just appreciate the talent just Absolutely. off of that. Absolutely. No, I appreciate that. And so, just on the Bob Ross slight, like anytime somebody brings up Bob Ross, I got to mention, like, to my knowledge, he's doing all that from memory. So it's like, it's one thing if he was looking at a photo of some tree, like a mm-hmm. lot of artists can do that. Yeah. To just know what like the bark <laughs> on a red wood, whatever, like he's really outside. I, I you saw know him, what I mean? Like he I, studies that shit. I saw a video of him drawing, a painting a, a painting because he d- doesn't draw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He paints it, painting a freaking a cabin in the woods. I was like, how the hell? Because he be in the woods. He be in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> like he really lives that life. Bro. Yeah, so. so that's what I'm saying. It's just like... I I can understand that side of art, yeah. But then, this this side of art is kind of also just easier to grasp sometimes mm. because at the end of the day, everything definitely has a deeper message. Unless you speak to the artist, you're not you're never gonna know. Really? So you always have to kind of like figure it out for yourself. Absolutely. And that's the point of kind of that's, I mean that's kind of the point of art in general, right? It's figuring it out for yourself. You're not necessarily supposed to know the message behind it. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. But yeah, I think this brings us to to our break, man. Right, swag, swag. We'll take a little break. Take a little breather. I'm a, uh, I'm gonna finish this drink and pour me up another one. Easy. <laughs> All right, y'all. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Back from the break. 
back from them, getting to know each other just a little bit more. For sure. I think a little bit more on a not super personal level, but now it's mm. like it's past. Like it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense. I'm happy to be here, bro. I really am. I want you to know that. So, <clears throat> one thing I do want to bring up, mm-hmm. and I was going to give you like a heads up, but Fuck it. I figured I'd make it fun. Uh, you did mention you had, you know, have a woman in your life. Oh, he's geeking. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's right, supposed to know. Nah, we chill, nah, nah, nah. Um, when did you meet her? Oh, in um, in your life, man. Yeah, so we met in college. Um, her roommate in college, I went to high school with. So we were just like mutuals, just through life type shit. And funny enough, she just bought a painting, like on some regular shit, on some very regular shit, professional, normal shit. And then like a year later, she bought another one. And then a year later, she bought a couple more. And, like she was cute, so I was like, and by that time I was single, so I was like, you know, just... Ears are up, you know what I mean? You're paying attention, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So I think at one point in time, she bought something like three paintings, and then I threw in a little extra one. It's just like, yeah, like this is for you. Which is what I would normally do for <clears> someone <throat> if they bought fucking three paintings off me. But um, yeah. yeah, it was just one of those things where like years and years later, I think we just kind of like, just IG DMs just led to, she has a podcast, you know what I mean? Shut up. I swear, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> And she was like, yo, I want to have you on my podcast. And I was like, pull up. She came through, and that's basically when we started dating. So That's crazy. Yeah. I our did. first date is like basically like on Spotify. <laughs> yeah, I, you got to yeah. put me onto that. I don't know. It's a little, yeah. I mean, it's a first date. You know what I mean? So it's it's weird to hear I can't it just now. give you the link to my first date. I definitely, <laughs> like I could, and it has a lot of listeners. But it's just, it's you can literally like cut like the tension, like. That's crazy. Half. You can feel the tension, so it just made sense type shit. That's that's crazy though. It's a little crazy. Yeah, it's a little crazy. But yeah, that's awesome for real. Um, <laughs> I definitely wasn't. I was like, I got to the we got to the painting part, but then you mentioned the podcast, and I was like, but damn, that was like low key the first date for y'all. Then yep, yep. So she's <clears throat> how long? How far along in your painting career do, would you say like you? You know, you met her. Honestly, early. Um, she was, like, one of my first customers, like, for real, for real. Um, especially, like, consecutive customers. customers. Um, maybe three years in. And I'm probably on, like, 10-ish yeah. now. So, like, it was early. But, like, I was good. So, she saw the vision. She saw... And we still she have saw- them. So, it's dope to, like, have the old ass shit. Like, with that is sick, shit. man. Yeah, it's dope. It's super Damn. tight. Yeah, it's fire. And it, like... I think the best part of any relationship, not taking away from anybody else who hasn't had a relationship like this, Mm. because like people always constantly ask me and Jen, like how we met each other. Mm. And it's like when you meet somebody organically, Mm. where it's just off based off regular conversation, that like becoming into a relationship just feels like it doesn't feel like it was forced. It wasn't like I'm trying to get at you, you trying to get it was just like it just happened. Bro, it's almost shit. like you would have to like stop it from happening. You know what I mean? like, it, it was <laughs> yeah. just happening. I don't know. I also think just creative people in general, like it just makes sense. Like she does podcasting, she does magazines, I do clothes, I do painting, like together we just do a whole bunch of shit. You know what I mean? That's so like sick. that's the only like not the only reason, but I think that's one of the strongest reasons why I- we're so strong. And I mean, I can't even imagine having somebody like that on your corner. Because yeah, like, in. yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's like, you know, that your partner, you know, your woman that you love is mm-hmm. like w- over there rooting for you. No matter what you're doing, she's like the one right there Going rooting him. for you. Like, Going him. that's sick, oh, man. Shout out to Bay, man. <laughs> Sheesh. Um, would Sheesh. you say she has... <laughs> Since since uh, when you became official with her, would you say that she um, made any gears turn in your painting career, For where sure. it was kind of like this happened because of this because of her? For sure, I think she's one of the few people that I trust her artistic opinion. Because like I was telling you earlier, like if you stayed around me long enough, like you would learn how to do certain shit. And I always tell her this. I'm like, yo, if something happens to me, like, you have to finish the painting I'm working on because I know you know how to do it type shit. Because, like, you see it every day. You see all my secrets, all my tricks. Like, 
So if there's any time, like if I'm painting a Doberman or some kind of dog, and I'm like, yo, like should this chain be platinum? Should it be chrome? Should it, like wh- like what you think? Like <clears throat> that's one of the few people where like if I'm doing something and her opinion is different, I'm gonna really stop and I'm gonna really listen and be like, damn, maybe you're right, because you know me better <laughs> than I know myself in so yeah. many different ways. So I'm like, maybe that is what I'm trying to say, and I'm just like caught up in the sauce right now. So. Yeah, I think when you when you're a creator and you have a partner. Mm. And they give you their opinion, whether mm-hmm. they whether they're a creator themselves, it's like that opinion means more than your own sometimes. <laughs> honestly, it should be ringing, bro. Because like, there's there's plenty of things in my life where it's like I'm doing something, and it's like, hey babe, what do you think about this? Yeah. And then she gives me a completely different answer from what I wanted, mm. and it's like that should make you think. That yeah. should make you sit there yeah. and be like. Okay, <laughs> because it's like it takes that that one person because that they are the person that's in your life that constantly near you. Absolutely, and that, I think women in general just be having like a different like sight into the future. Like that sometimes we just be struggling with. So for sure, I mean, th- there's a reason why. <clears throat> I mean, science scientifically speaking, like mm. I think it's like it's a known fact that women mentally mature more than than men do. It's embarrassing. <laughs> it's embarrassing. Because, like, me and my partner, we're the same age. So it's like, I be trying to catch up, literally. Like, I just be trying to be an adult as much as possible. <laughs> and it's hard. That's, like, a, that's a constant mental battle for me. Yeah. It's like, because, <clears throat> like, I, I be telling people how old I am, you know, obviously when they get on, because they ask. Mm-hmm. And what am I about to do, lie about my age? Right, right, right. Hell no. Like, right. right. <clears throat> but not not that I even keep my age a secret, but it's just like mm. it just doesn't come up on the podcast where it's like, oh, this is how old I am. For sure. And it's um I think the we live in a generation where age, when it comes to being a grown up, it kind of doesn't really matter. Mm. Almost. Okay, I'm listening. I'm yeah, listening. Cause obviously there's there's aspects where age really does matter. Of but course. but being an adult Absolutely. You know, I don't want to get drinks. Like, no, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You know what I, <laughs> go ahead, bro. You know what I mean though? It's just like when it comes to like being an adult. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm at that like I guess, you know, to put it out there, like I'm about to be thirty and like mm. Sometimes you sit there and you're just like thinking like, yo, am I an adult? Am I not an adult? Like, yeah, yeah. there's just certain things that you think about because like our generation, point blank period, is nothing mm. like the adults that we grew up seeing. Yeah. Like, it's completely yeah. We different. Were the, I think we were one of the biggest shifts, in my opinion. I think. People our age back in the day would not be dressing like what we're dressing. Not like. at all. You know bro. what I mean? Not at all. So it's just like when it just comes down to what you wear on a daily basis. Yeah. Is... It's just, it's a shift and it's a shift that you notice where it's like when you're getting to that age that you used to see, like, that's an adult. Right, right. With responsibilities. Absolutely. It is tricky, yo. Because especially because, like, again, like, I turn 29 next week type shit. So it's like, it's funny. I was even thinking about the way I dress as well. I'm like, so when I hit 30, like, am I still going to be on, like, some young nigga shit? Or, like, you know what I mean? Or do I, like... Swag it out and get mature <laughs> with it. Like it's, I think it's hard because no matter what, and you made a good point. Like no one's gonna lie about their age, but it's also like you don't want to like try to be younger either. You know what I mean? It's like I think it's yeah. we're at that tricky point of like just being ourselves try, and yeah. maturing into that weird like zillennial adult. And you know? well, the one thing I will say is like what helps me cope with the mm. way I live my life and the mm-hmm. way. I choose to put my clothes on in the morning. For sure. <clears throat> is at the end of the day, I have responsibilities and I know I take care of them. Absolutely. And the way I dress should not be an indication on how responsible or unresponsible I am Preach. in my adult life. Yes, sir. And I agree. <clears throat> so like so when 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 those conversations that I have in my own so I guess uh, off question here. Go ahead. Um, do you have like an inner dialogue? Like in my mind? Yeah. Bro. Not, just, not not like on not on some like no, psychopath no. shit. It could like, be on that though if you want it to be. You know what I <laughs> no, mean? No, because like, I, I yeah. heard that not everybody has an inner dialogue. I have heard that. I've like heard I can that. talk to myself in my head. I'll talk to myself in the head and out of head. So it's like literally like today when I drove here, there was no music. I just talked to myself. 
for an hour and some change, like out loud, <laughs> alone. Alone, nobody <laughs> was with me. So it's like, yeah, no. Dialogue. You saw me drive up. Like, nobody was in my car. It was the outer dialogue. You feel me, bro? So yeah, yeah. I think that's really important though, because like that's. I think sometimes you need to hear yourself say shit out loud. Yeah, and I think sometimes like even just the the vocal exercise, like that energetic release of saying whatever the fuck you wanted to say, is very like uplifting and cleansing. So 100%. I'm here for it, bro. Like, yeah. Also, really quick to the audience, if you guys hear <laughs> any little screams, it's because my dogs are in the room. We got them dogs with us. My dogs We got them dogs with us. You know what I mean? It's the G-Pack episode. Yeah. Hey. You know what I mean? We got them dogs with us. So my dogs are in the next room, and obviously hey. I record my apartment for anybody who doesn't know, so my dogs oh, are in the other it. room, so just apologies if you hear them. But... um. No, but that's that's what I'm saying. Like, I be having conversations with myself because I be thinking about that shit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's like, I'm about to actually be 30. Like, Does that scare you at all? Honestly, not really, no. not mm. At least not anymore. Before, yes. Why? Why did it um, scare you before? Again, because it's those kind of, like, conversations where it's like, what makes you an adult? mm and it's like a convert. Is it age? Is it the way you dress? Mm-hmm. Is it the way you maneuver through life? What makes you an adult? Right. And ultimately, I came to the conclusion myself where it's like nothing necessarily makes you an adult. Nothing mm. really makes you not an adult. Yeah. It's yeah. like at the end of the day, your age is just your age. That's a fact. You know, obviously, when it comes to being older, mm-hmm. you are responsible for your own decisions. You are responsible for your life, yeah. you know? You can't look back and be like, yo, pops, help me out. Like, yeah, it, it, like yeah. obviously, your parents are always going to be there, and your parents, bless their souls, they're always going to help you no matter what. But sure. ultimately speaking, when you're an adult, like, you have to take care of shit on your own. Absolutely. So, ultimately, it's just something that, you know, I came to the conclusion where it's like, I'm going to dress the way I want to dress because that's how I express myself. Yeah. One day I could look like an adult where I'm just sure. like wearing some slacks yeah, <laughs> and, a, and, a, and a button down and yeah. I look like an adult. Yeah. And other days I walk out and people will probably think that I'm 25. For sure. And that's just what that's it good. is. That's just what it is. You don't want to be looking crusty. Right? <clears throat> that's what I'm saying. Well, the, well, that's the thing. It's like, uh, I think in my life, in my personal life, mm. I've come to realize that Every, damn near everything in life is subjective. Facts. I like that. You know? I like that. So, whether whether you choose to wake up right. and wear some slacks with right. some dress shoes, or you choose to wake up and wear some jean shorts Talk <laughs> or to some him. sneakers, Talk like, to it him. doesn't make you less of an adult. That's real. Depending on your age, you know? That's definitely real. I almost even feel like the opposite, because you made a good point, like, you're never really an adult. I remember, like, today, like, it was raining out. I seen this old white dude. He was old, but he had, like, a jacket on, and it was too big for him. <laughs> and, like, he was just, like, flapping the sleeves like a little kid would. No way. You know what I mean? And I was like, when I'm like 90 or whatever the fuck he was, like, I really hope I'm on some like seven year old shit, like in the rain. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to be like, well, I'm 80, so I better act 80. Yeah. You know? So I feel both sides of it. I think it's just about just the human experience and just trying to like be as present as possible and not thinking about like the social constructs of age, like you saying and shit. So. It's weird. And that's why, like, the conversation can get tricky, obviously, when Absolutely. you talk about specific For sure. conversation topics when it comes to age. But when we're talking just about adulthood, yeah. <clears throat> responsibilities, the way you're supposed to dress, the way you're supposed to carry yourself, mm. it all obviously depends on the situation. I like, agree. I'm I not going to act like a complete fool if I'm at my work or, yeah, you know, yeah, at my yeah, job. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. I'm not about to walk in there with some J's. Jeans sagged, mm. you know, like it's just different things for different places. That is true. You know, at true. the end of the day, you're going to be yourself, but you have to be aware of mm. how you're supposed to carry yourself yeah. in these different situations. Right. <clears throat> kind of like it's kind of like code switching. I'm, I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure you've heard of it, 100%, you know, 100%. especially in like our world. Yeah. yeah. That of colored people, because it's like. Mm. I'd hate to bring color into this, but it's nah, like, talk about it. <clears throat> you know, 
they when when people talk about it, it's like why do you why do you talk the way you talk around these people? But yeah. when you're around me, yeah. you be talking like this, not yeah, like that. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's not necessarily like I'm code switching to make them feel comfortable. I'm code switching like I don't even see why that's a negative thing. It's just mm. like you're just supposed to carry yourself differently around different situations. That's very true. You know, if I'm like, for example, if you were to go somewhere and you're presenting your art. Yeah. You're not going to go in there acting like a complete fool. Uh, well, I never would. Never would. <laughs> well, no not, not to I'm say at, you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, for sure. You I know. feel that. I think like, I think what it comes down to, because you make a really good point, especially with like black and brown people, like, I don't think we have the luxury not to code switch sometimes. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I think more often than not, lately I force myself to still put like a little bit of my swag. Like that's the least I could do. A little twang in there. You know what I mean? Just a little yeah. twang, bro. Like I'm gonna still have one of the slacks for like, it's gonna be something else in there too to just be like, okay, I'm me. You know Otherwise, what's crazy? I noticed it at mm, the... Uh, you feel what I'm saying, yeah. bro? Like, I'm presentable, but, like, I'm definitely, like, we can go chill after this, too, and I don't look stupid. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? Yeah. So that's really important to me, but I feel that for sure. You know, well, we we talked a little bit about the conversation of, like, not necessarily being egotistical, but mm. still looking out for your best interest. Absolutely. And... <clears throat> I want to know how you maneuver through those things on a deeper level because you mentioned complex yeah. earlier where you were just like, you know, I thought I was going to be on complex the next day and I'm him. But the thing is you, you've you made it now and you are on complex. For anybody who doesn't know, Boy G Pack is on complex. Mm. So to that, to yourself from back ago, mm. you know, that thought he was him. Yeah. And thought he was gonna be on complex the next day. Yeah. You are now. You know? Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. how do you cause you definitely don't carry yourself? Like I said, that's why I always like that's why I made that clear distinction where it's like you're not egotistical because you're mm. not. I appreciate you. But you're you've been on complex, and then for some people, being on complex is probably the main goal. Mm. You know, mm. I'm not saying that was your main goal, but I hear you. I hear you. But it's a it's a very big milestone I that you. other people would consider like that's the goal. So <clears throat> the fact that you don't carry yourself so egotistically, yeah, is there something that you consciously make sure that you don't carry yourself like that, or is it just like yo, I'm just that's just how I am? To be a hundred percent honest, I think, and this has no negative, you know, energy towards any brand. I think that specific experience showed me like I was doing that all along. Let me tell you the story, if that's cool. Yeah. Because it'll make, <laughs> it make so much please, more sense. Please, please, please. It'll please. make so much more sense. So long story short, um, I was doing a bunch of reels, right? I got into reels because I was really just straight with painting photos. I was like, I ain't doing no reels. Like, I'm like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm not doing this trendy shit. So I started doing reels, started getting to that joint. And in my mind, I don't know if you have this feeling. I know a lot of creatives do. I have this, like, thought in my mind. It's similar to imposter syndrome, but it's, like, whatever my dream is, my goal is, I know for a fact it is not going to happen for me, right? I'm, like, whatever it is, like, I be I know it's not going to happen, but I'm still going to try to prove myself wrong type shit, right? Okay. So in my mind, I was, like, yo, no matter what I do, I'm never going to go viral in my life. I'm never going to get more than whatever, whatever. I know I'm him. I'm hard as fuck, but it's not going to work out. One day I go viral, right? And the thing I'm really proud of is, like, the video that I went viral of, none of it was new work. It was all work that was old, but it had just never been shown together, right? So it's like, it's not like I did something new. I was just like, y'all just don't understand what's been happening. Joint goes viral. Cool. Next week, I'm like, all right, this shit worked. I'm going to do it again. I'm making my next post. It's the remaining paintings. I'm about to, you know, flick it up, whatever, whatever. And I'm about to post it. I go to tag Complex in it, bro. I go to tag them in it. And I look at their account, like, yo, they got 10 million followers. Like, they're not going to see this shit. Like, I take them off the post. Post it without tagging them. Because I'm like, it's just not going to happen. I count myself out, bro. Like yeah. I told you before, I'm yeah, like, it's, just it's like, never going to happen. There's no point in doing it. Same day, bro. They DM me from that same account. So, yo, g Pack, we want to da 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 I'm like, damn, that shit kind of crazy, right? So, fast forward. They send me some questions. And they're like, you can either 
do it live with us via Zoom, or you can record it yourself and send it in. I was like, bro, I'm on complex. I'm not doing a Zoom. You know what I mean? The I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> you know I'm not finna be Zooming I'm with not. like some headphones. What do I look like? I'm on Complex Magazine. So this is what I, this is where I get into it. Where it's like, bro, like <clears throat> they just sent me some questions. I hit up my boy Yusuf C C Case. Like we filmed that shit. He read it to me. We edited ourselves. We color graded ourselves. We fucking put the subtitles on ourselves. Send it back to him, and all they did was post it. So it's just like, bro, like. It was us all along, like it from was, yeah. start to finish. Like the only difference, like it was on their account and not mine. You know what I'm saying? So like that just let me know. It's like, bro, it's in you, not on you. Like literally, like you can do whatever the fuck. You probably are better off doing it yourself than trusting it to whoever you think it is. That's crazy. So that's real rap. That, you know what I'm saying that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, man. But it was dope though. It was really cool. Really cool. Wow. No, I mean, yeah. I've, like I said, like. It'd be hard to not let your head get blown up mm. of the thought of, like, a page like Complex hitting you up. Yeah. Less work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd, yeah. it'd be hard to. Maybe. Because I, you think so? Like, if, I, if Complex <laughs> hit you today, would you be, like, how would you feel? I think, I think on a, on a, on a surface level, any normal person is going to have, like, the same thing, like, imposter syndrome. Because, like constantly like the thing is like you know i i have people on that you know have a good amount of following and they'll be like dude you're gonna make it and it's like i'm standing and i'm like thank you so much i appreciate you thank you for being on my podcast right i don't believe that yeah you know and yeah. it's because it it's because <laughs> so thank you but fuck you <laughs> <laughs> thank you but oh, it, man. just stop giving me falsehood yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah 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 but it's it's not it's just it's because you don't when you're doing something because you like doing it, mm. you're not thinking about that. Mm, and, facts, facts. You know, you're not. It, it, you know, I think I've said it on the podcast before. I don't know if I have anybody watching. Please check me on that. <laughs> but like, I'm doing this because I like it. I'm doing yeah. this honestly. Because it helps me meet the people I want to meet. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. talk to these people I want to meet and have conversations. Because sometimes I end up having deeper conversations off camera Absolutely. than on camera. 100%. Yeah. And to me, that's that's dope. And I think that's that, that's one of the questions you asked me mm. when we first met is like, why do you do this or, or something? I can't remember the exact question. And yeah. I kind of told you, I was like, honestly, if I'm being honest with you, I do it to just meet people. Just talk to people. Just yeah, to yeah. talk to people that I think are dope as fuck. Absolutely. You know, like, Absolutely. shout out Bucky Malone. Like, mm. Bucky Malone was, in my eyes, one of the one of the first, like, big artists that I had on. Yeah. And, you know, because he's, like, from the DMV area. I used to listen to his music. And I was like, yeah. yo, I would, uh, it'd be dope to meet him. Yeah. <clears throat> And when I had him on, I was like, it was dope as fuck. I believe it. You know? So it's just like, when, you, when you're when you doing it like that, you're not thinking like, I want to make it. Yeah. Let me make a million dollars off this shit. Right. You're just doing it because you want to do it. Because it's fun. Yeah. And that's, that's me pretty much. Absolutely. You know? Because like, in that day when you said that, oh, I was going to tag Complex. Yeah. Like, obviously you want to gain... Not not saying that you want to gain, but it's like mm. it'd be nice to have that notoriety, notoriety, no, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, sir. Um, but it's like <clears throat> at the end of the day, you're doing it because you'd love it, though. Yeah, I need to do it. That's you like know. a compulsion, bro. Like I yeah. wake, I woke up today at six forty-five, pain. That's what that, it's and that's Saturday. my that's my thing. It's like <laughs> you know I mean? you're you're doing it because like at yeah. this point in your life you're doing this shit because you love it. Yeah, I need to. You know, for sure. It's part of it's part of that schedule. For sure. You know, it's like, it, you know, to somebody else, it's like wake up, go to the gym. To you, it's like wake up, paint, go to the gym. <laughs> like you know, it's it's a routine. It's what you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can you can sense that you're not out here. Let me let me paint this yeah. so I can post this this day. You let me paint this because I want to paint this, and then if I'm finished, when I get finished with, I'll post it. But I'll be honest; I'll be completely transparent. Like that is the truth. But I think even still, I struggle with 
I'm, that's how I be feeling though. <laughs> like, I, I struggle with like knowing what direction to go because it's like, like you said, you might do some shit you're really passionate about, but it might not even be for the internet all the time. Sometimes it's just like, this is just, just getting it out, getting it's the kinks for, out. It's for me. You know what I'm saying? And just knowing what's for you, knowing what's for your brand, knowing what's for social media, like, you know, what's for business, it's, it's it's tricky. I'm not gonna sit here and act like I'm like, yeah, I just got that shit. Like, I'm still actively like, every day, like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's Maybe that's why, you know what I mean? <clears throat> why motherfuckers be so humble, because I'll be confused, bro. <laughs> I'll be confused. Man, yeah. but like, the thing is like, I, I mean, keep keep it 100p. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. You you know you're a good painter. Like now at least in this point yeah, of life. Yeah, but that's why I was getting out early. I don't think it matters. Yeah, I don't think it matters. And I mean that. Okay. <laughs> but I appreciate I can you. understand that. No, you know I, but what I'm no, saying? Because I get it though. That's you the thing. Know? It's like I do get it. But it's like We're gonna make it something happen. You low key you're like you are kinda him. Like bro, the paintings I appreciate you. Bro, the paintings that you be putting out, like them shits is crazy. I appreciate and the you. thing is uh, one one thing I did want to point out is like you know, we spoke about you not wanting to draw people, like, yeah. but now you kind of, you are. I don't know yeah. which one was your first piece where you drew an actual person. Yeah. Um. I know one of the pieces that I saw first, like, just scrolling on your IG is, like, I'm not sure if it's you, mm. but probably, it's, you but you got, you get, the, it has, um, the necklace is the angel numbers, mm. and then G-Pack, and I think it's like Yeah, that's me. That's you drew yourself. Yeah, self portrait. <clears throat> like that must have still been a little bit like was that the first time you drew an actual person, whether it was yourself or somebody else, but was that the first time or that was definitely the first self portrait in many years. Um I went on a run of doing a lot of celebrities, you know what I mean? Like I would do a lot of local people, Brent Fias, Rico Nasty, um, Alex Vaughn. Ari Lennox, like I was on like a DMV kind of like kick. Um, and that actually got a lot of traction, but then you start getting into potential, you know, legal bullshit because now I'm using other people's likeness without their permission. I got to make sure the photographer is cool with me selling this as a print or as an original. Mm. You know, and it's just I didn't it's even a lot think of, about that. It's a lot of business, you know what I'm saying? So it's like that's when I really just switched up to it's either like homies or like dogs you know because like neither one of them are gonna sue me you know what i'm saying i guess with the question i i kind of want to ask is when did you feel comfortable drawing a person and not a dog anymore you're not not an animal i guess yeah that's a great question i'm trying to think the first time it definitely had to be back in college um because i started off drawing people but i wouldn't draw their eyes it would just be their mouths and that was kind of a vibe like i did a couple like beyonce Nicki minaj's and like it would just be like the lips and like Girls were fucking with that. Um, when I started doing actual people, people, it had to be, I want to say, end of college. I was just trying to just, like, get my followers up, bro. So I was painting influencers. I was painting Tumblr baddies. Like, anything you could imagine. Like, I was just painting. Tumblr baddies. You know what I'm saying? Like, exactly. that was that time. The swagger. You feel me? <laughs> you mean? And, like, yeah, that was just um, not a mess, but it didn't work like how I thought it would. <clears throat> mm-hmm. But um, that self-portrait specifically... That changed a lot because I just I was able to get literally like to the nitty gritty of my own face, and I think once you kind of like take a step that far into the realm of just like detail and realism, like it just kind of like sticks with you. So now you're like, that's just where we at. You it's, know what I mean? Yeah, it's kind of taking a look at yourself and looking at the flaws and accepting yeah. them. Yeah, absolutely. That's crazy. Man. Absolutely crazy, man. <clears throat> How you feel? It's about that time to take it to an end, man. Sheesh. It's crazy, right? It, you know what's crazy? <laughs> I, I will say this uh, on on air, I guess, if you will. Mm. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's because of the break, but the podcast, oh, like the episodes, always pick up mm-hmm. the second portion. Absolutely. And I think I think it's mostly because. You for for example yourself like the guest you become more a little bit more comfortable to the fact of like you disassociate the camera the lights and it becomes like yo I'm just talking to the what what I tell you 
I want you to feel like you're talking to the homie, and then it just ends up happening. Like nah, that's a fact. But look, you know, unfortunately, it always gets good in the second half. I know, man. And then I have to cut it. Got to cut it. They don't even get to see the final, the the greatest moments. But it's all good, man. We appreciate y'all. But um, <clears throat> GPEC, it mm. it literally has been an absolute pleasure right. to have you on. Likewise, man. likewise. And. <clears throat> I hope you had a great time. I did, bro. Nah, I love talking to you. I think you're an excellent speaker, excellent interviewer, man. (laughs) And we finna get turned next weekend, so. Oh, 100%. 100%. You know. Um, Please let the people know where they can find you, your work, any publications you personally want to shout out. For sure. Um, My name is Gentry Pack, underscore G-Pack on everything. Um, If you like art, if you like fashion, if you like swag. Just look me up. You'll find it. I appreciate y'all. Well, that concludes this episode, everybody. Thank you again for tuning in. You can catch podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube if you want to see our lovely faces. Peace out, y'all. Swag.